Hello my friends, my name is Chico Lopez. You can find this video at chicolopez.com. You have a link to my Instagram channel or you can go to peopleuniversity.com. Folks, we have a tremendous uh, video today. The topic is really amazing. Um, you might heard the phrase, make America great again. Of course, this is not gonna be about politics. So please don't put any hate against the president of the United States on the video. You will be, you might get banned, completely banned. Cause I'm not into that. This video today is going to be how to make the American Pitbull Terrier great again. And when I said great again, I means the real American Pitbull Terrier great again. When I say real means that they are not dogs that are not real. They are dogs that are completely not real Pitbulls, of course. And of course, not every dog is great and not every family of dogs is great. Fact is, in the abundance of opinions lives mediocrity. So going to the topic of why make the American Pitbull Terrier a great again. The American Pitbull Terrier, a great animal, was created at the very beginning with the very purpose of it was to create a complete combat dog. Every single pit bull, pay attention to what I'm gonna tell you, every single pit bull, even the mutts that you see there, that have a little bit of pit bull or something, are connected to some bloodline, are connected to some dogs that came from game dogs. So the argument of saying this dog is bad because it's connected to a game bloodline is completely idiotic, it's completely stupid, okay? all of the dogs go back in some level to the game dogs. The game dogs were bad dogs. No, we're not bad dogs. We're used for the function when it was legal, when it was allowed, when the law looked the other way, back in the early 1900s, where the sheriff and the judges and the policemen used to be part of the so-called game. There was no problem. It was a different society. You know, you go to Manhattan and you see the reports on the police gazette where they're actually having dogs in combat in New York City, right by where the Marriott Hotel is right now. So with that being said, you must understand that society is changing. And we do agree with that and we do respect that, okay? I don't agree with everything, but I will have to respect that, okay? That's the law. And of course, I don't agree with everything, the so-called law that made by politicians and made by corrupt people and mostly ignorant people, we're still gonna have to respect it because it's just the way of living. Um, when it comes to the American Pitbull Terrier, there is the strongest reason not to destroy the real American Pitbull Terrier, the game dog. There's no reason to destroy it. And I'm gonna teach you how, why. Let me explain to you, Mr. Judge. Let me explain to you, Mr. Doctor, Mr. Engineer, Mr. Professional. You spend 20 years becoming a doctor, 25 years becoming a, a PhD. I spent 27 years on the University of the American People Terrier to get my PhD and be the maximum authority by merit on the real American People Terrier. The intentions of this video is to show you why the American People Terrier is coming back to become the great dog all over again through the golden vein. Let me explain to you why the dog is worth keeping for the American heritage. Let me tell you why. Number one is that there were some parallel things that were created. Yes, the one that created the best combat dog. Two things happened automatically by default, and they may be even bigger. They actually, they did prove to be bigger. And I explained to you why. The whole sense of, of, of being a game dog never give up, that's an ability that is very easy to lose. This, think about a table that has three legs, okay? One of them is gonna be the gameness, never give up of the fighting animal, okay? The same using a horse and a boxer in life, the men that don't wanna give up, the fireman that wants to go into the fire and still get the baby out of this, you know, burning building, risk his life. There's some levels of gameness, you can look at other videos that I made. The other quality is the athleticism, the build of the dog, the way the dog was built, the way he's constructed, and the process of growth. Of course, in some cases, he has been deformed into a bully, or deformed into a micro dog, or deformed by different 
associations or or registrations that you know have some judges that don't know much about the real American people territory, and they decide to do this or do that. And number three, the third leg. The third leg is going to be something that is amazing. is the connection between the human and the dog. That special connection is not possessed by any other breed. In, in any other breed was not so important if the dog was a man biter or if the dog was a really great dog with the family. Of course, during the process of selecting dogs for combat, there were a few elements that were good for the purpose of fighting and men biters and of course some dummies in the past and then a no not social far away past use those dogs for uh breeding fourth and winner black dog that it became very famous in america comes to mind the dog was a man biter a dog that i'll never use because he was a man biter i don't use men biters in 27 years of breeding dogs i never wanted to have a man biter I have children, I raise, I build my bloodline with my own kids in my house. So when it comes to the ability to connect with the human, no other dog has ever gone through a process of about 180 years of continuous improvement, continuous improvement, every single generation. Let's think about this, the 1900s, 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940, through all those years of growth, continuous growth, there were men that spent their time. Obviously, there were, let's say in 2000, and, uh, I'm sorry, in 1910, there were so many kennels. Well, actually, they never killed kennels. That's a new word they said. But so many different men of honor that used, used, used to have these dogs. And these dogs were kept away from regular people, right? Because, look, man, they created such a spell, a special dogs. They didn't want to share them. Sharing was not caring at the time. Sharing was being smart, keep it for myself. Developing a super dog, it was not something to be given away, share away, or sold away. So they kept them for themselves. It was somewhere around the 1930s or something when some breeders, including John P. Kobe, decided to make their dogs really popular and sell those dogs to people called breeders. And the word breeders become really powerful. What the definition of the separation or the meaning of what's a breeder has changed a lot. You know, maybe back in the 1900s, being a breeder means you were someone that was part of the developing of the process. Today, it really just means two people or a person that has two dogs, having sex, having puppy, getting the dogs registered and selling them. Now he's a breeder, you know? Uh, so the, the, the whole process has changed. But once again, the better the compact dog, the better the body, and then the better the connection he had. Today, this table with three legs, one leg has to be gone because the dogs are not gonna be used for combat. But the other two legs are worth keeping the breed. One of them is the dog is amazing in the outside, is athletically built amazingly, can breed almost on the water, is powerful, is a great dog to work out, is a great dog to have fun, to play, you know, games, to go hunting and this and that and activities and train yourself and keep yourself physically strong. Beautiful in a society where we have a lot of obesity all over the world. Hey, nothing wrong with having a dog and walking dog. I got a client of mine that he lost 40 pounds just with the dog he got from me. His wife lost another 40 pounds too, if not more. And then the second leg that we're gonna keep is the leg of the dog connecting with you in ways nothing can connect. We're in an era where you see an airplane, a man or a woman with this small poodle, with this small, maybe a chicken, and they say this is a, a, an animal of emotional support. That's not a joke, that's a serious thing. People actually get attached to these little animals and they need to get that emotional support. Just imagine for a second that instead of having the emotional support for an animal that is actually weak and maybe helpless in case of an emergency, you have the emotional support of a superhero, of a superhero. A superhero that his great, great, great grandmother was an amazing dog that would never give up and inspires you. And you can smell the sense of confidence on this dog. That is brutal, my friend. That is really, really strong. And that's really why the American People Terrier 
is becoming great again in my hands. I'm taking the American Pitbull Terrier and I'm not sharing it with the masses to prevent the problem of the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s that destroyed the breed, where anybody with a dollar will show up and say, I wanna get two of those, I wanna get three of those, and get all those dogs and destroy the breed. It's a very scientific, um, how do you call it, opinion, and, and a very protective opinion because I worked so hard to create these dogs. I respect what other great men did in the past to preserve the best to best. Believe it or not, on the 70s, on the 80s, and the 90s, men preserved the dogs very much. Somewhere around 2007, when I used to live in the United States, I used to live in Texas, I realized the whole thing with the dogs, the game dogs was over. There was something that was gonna be in my books where there was like an asteroid that hit the whole population of, of dogs that are game bred dogs. And there was a wealth of genetics, some good, some mediocre, a few of them excellent, got transferred from the hands of those men to the hands of the criminal, to the hands of the, the thug, the drug dealer. And, and it, that happens because of a situation that happened in the United States and the dogs were completely abandoned. You know, one guy had 30, 40 dogs and he sold it to the guys that were watching television and said, oh yeah, I wanna be cool, I wanna have a dog. And the dogs went to the wrong hands. And by 2017, 10 years later, all those dogs that those dogs bought or purchased, they already bred in three, four, five times, already destroyed. The pedigrees, they stood there and you see the pedigrees, the numbers, the percentages, they're still there. But the dogs had a shadow of what the dogs used to be prior to 2007. And that is the truth. That is a fact. You know, I just explained to you something that you never heard it like this from nobody before. Even if you are my hater, even if you don't like me, these are the facts. I explained to you this in ways you couldn't understand it on your own or you never heard from anybody else. So let me go back to my three leg table theater. One was a comeback dog, activity. The other one was the part where the dog is physically strong. And the other one is the leg that shows the dog being a great connector and being a dog that it connects with the human. This leg over here, which is the gay, the, the, the leg of the comeback dog being used as a comeback has to be gone. The only two legs we're going to have is one where the dog is physically the best dog in the world when he comes from the best genetics. And that's the key, the genetics. And then the leg where the dog is the best connector to the humanity very important of course i got the best genetics for anything and that's why you know people call me all day look the number 281-226-0370 i am pretty sure every agency in the world is listening to the number conversations and they're listening to me saying i don't sell you and i don't sell you and i don't sell you and they by now understand that i'm very serious about only selling my dogs to the very best humans in the world doctors, engineers, people that have character, not the thugs, not the criminals, you know, only great people. So what used to be the destruction of the American people terrier and being hopeless, today there is one being of hope and that these dogs back here. These dogs will preserve this breed because everything else is beneath them, believe it or not. Every other pit bull of whatever level it is, it is beneath these dogs and it's beneath these dogs because of genetics because of consistency because of quality are they some good dogs out there of course there are some good dogs it's got it one here one there whatever mix blah 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 whatever and in the next two three years that level will go down in the next two three years it will go down in the next 10 years it'll be what it will be in the so-called game that they used to have back in the in 2007, 2008, whatever in America, now it's called a swamp. Those guys don't have good dogs. Those guys back there doing whatever they're doing, they don't have good dogs. And my advice for you guys, young guys, 12, 14, 15, 17, if your uncle used to that, do that activity, used to be different times. Today, you need to make sure that you have the pleasure of owning the real American people Terrier. You need to call me, zero criminal activities, just owning a great dog. There's a lot of people that 
you know, know exactly what the dogs used to be used for in the past. And they want to get a dog used to raise their children, grandchildren, and they will never sell dogs. So that's why my motto, no sellers and not no people that are in illegal activities, because I'm preserving these dogs for the future, for the better people, for the judges, for the lawyers, for the doctors, for the engineers, for the entrepreneurs, for the businessmen, for the athletic men, for the people that play basketball, for the people that, especially the warrior, you know, the boxer, the, you know, UFC, Bellator, you know, Royce Gracie. Have these dogs, it's just a pleasure. I have today my, my t-shirt from Terrence Crawford, a great boxer. And um, for today, um, I'm sorry guys, excuse me? The boogeyman. The boogeyman of 147 pounds for sure, Terrence Crawford. So folks, this is a great experience today. This video is fantastic because I provide you with information that's been in the back of my head for a long time. You know, society has changed. Believe it or not, Manhattan Police Gazette reporting combat dogs. That was reality back then. Today, obviously, you'll get hanged if you do anything like that, right? And whether you agree or not, whether you agree or not, that's the society that we live in today. So what do we have left? We have left the very best American Pitbull Terrier ever, the Golden Vein. My number is 281-226-0370. If you're a doctor, an engineer, someone professional, or just a blue collar guy, just like me, blue collar guy. You know, you used to be a plumber or a worker, a college, university guy, you know, and someone that needs to have a great dog, a great companion for your children. I'd be more than glad to help you out and sell you a great dog so you can enjoy with your family. Of course, they're not for everybody. They're not for the snowflake, they're not for the sassy, and they're not for the idiot. Let me explain to you how that goes. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. We're going to the Wilder and Brazil fight, boxing, boxing battle. And I go to, you know, jogging early in the morning. I see these big buff guys, you know, big arms, cross feet boys, you know, walking with poodles. 2000, that was 2018, walking with poodles. And I remember when I used to live in the Bronx, New York, 1991. And people used to walk, even an old lady will walk with American Pitbull Terrier. Of whatever level the dog was. Not a high quality level Pitbull, but the children, everybody walk with a Pitbull. What a contrast. What a society. The men got feminized. Instead of walking their own dog, they are walking a poodle or their girlfriend's dog. A small lap dog. You understand? It's crazy. But, you know, you think about it. If you will go to the Bronx in 1991, the kind of dog you had, the kind of man you were. So of course they're not for everybody. You gotta be a tough man. You gotta be a tough person. The kind of man and the kind of woman that built the country of the United States. The man that went out for war, World War I, World War II. The man that fought against adversity in the recession. They were not snowflakes. They were not sassy boys. So for those men that are strong inside, there's no other dog better than the American People Terrier. You're a boxer, you're, in, you're fighting in life, and you have any other dog that is not from Chico Lopez, let me tell you something. You got something that is not as good as the dogs I have here. With this, I'm gonna say, God bless you. I wish you the very best. I hope this video added value to your life and then bring a lot of knowledge. It's time to make the American People Terrier great again. My name is Chico Lopez. I hope you enjoyed the video. God bless you. Bye-bye.